Hey everybody, welcome back to the Old Swedes Farm. It's Rich. I wanted to tackle a topic today that is way off from our normal videos. Um, a lot of our videos deal with our farm here, our big garden, our chickens. Uh, we want to be self-sufficient. We want to provide for ourselves. I've got a bunch of viewers and a bunch of people who check in occasionally who want to be prepared for every situation. Preppers uh, are some of them and some are, you know, just folks who want to be prepared. Um, and one aspect that they've asked about as they've seen my antennas around is amateur radio or ham radio. I'm a ham radio guy. I have been an amateur radio operator since 1980. So for more than 40 years, I've been a ham. Um, it is my main hobby. I've talked to ev all 50 states. I've talked to probably 250 countries around the world. It is, for me, it is fun to know that you turn on the radio and you never know who you're gonna talk to. People have asked me about preparedness and prepping and being ready for a, a possible emergency, the stuff hitting the fan. Um, and most of the stuff, most of the videos I've seen on YouTube, people get a handheld and think that they're going to be able to talk to anybody anywhere uh, with a little handheld. I want to just talk about kind of the the reality, possibly of uh, of communication uh, if stuff hits the fan, and what what you might need. It's not a lot, but uh, kind of what you might need as far as radios and antennas. Um, just a very short crash course video and if there's other ideas that people have, I'll, I'll make a few other videos. To be a ham radio operator, to use a ham radio, you can buy one, anyone can buy one, but to actually use it, to communicate with someone on the other end legally, you need to have a license. Now a, a, there's different levels of licensing, a technician, a general, uh, and an extra class. Really all you need to do is get one of the license manuals, study, study the manual, take a test, you can be a licensed ham radio operator. It's that simple. Uh, there's some electronics theory, um, you used to have to know Morse code, you don't need to know that anymore, but electronics theory, how radios work, communication, the, the frequencies, the rules, um, they give you all the questions and answers. So if you wanted to just memorize the questions and answers, you could get your license pretty easy. Once you get a license, you know, you need a license for this. If you want to get a small radio like this for GMRS, uh, which is another radio service, you can go to the FCC website. I think it's fill out a form and pay a fee and you'll have your license, I believe, for 10 years for you and your family. You can communicate using the GMRS radios, which are very similar in look to this. Uh, the frequencies are slightly different. To use a ham radio, you need a license. So look into that. Um, there's our national organization, the ARRL. If you look up ARRL.org, I believe it is, they'll have all the license manuals there. You can get them out on Amazon. I'll, uh, in fact, I'll try to put a link down below to a technician class license manual uh, that you can just click on the link and buy it out on Amazon. Enough on that. You need to be licensed. If you get on and you don't and you operate a ham radio without a license, we're going to know that you're not licensed. Just uh, you won't have a call sign. You just how you operate uh, will show that you're an unlicensed operator. Um, the different radios. Now the stuff I see is everybody says, "Well, get one of these." I think Baofeng. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Some Chinese cheap Chinese radios. Baofeng. Get two of them. You can communicate. Well, that's great. These are VHF, UHF. This one is a dual band. Uh, it's a Yesu. I like Yesu equipment. Um, this is a dual band, meaning two bands. Uh, this is for 144 and 440 megahertz. Uh, very, very high VHF, UHF, very high frequency. You get these with the small antenna. This is a five watt radio. I will probably be able to communicate simplex. I'm not going to use a repeater. If I just want to talk to the other radio without using other, other means, I'll probably be able to, if I'm at a good height, five miles with the five watts here. Uh, reliably a, a mile or so. Uh, if you get down in a valley, you're in a tough situation. So 
Uh, height is a, a big thing with VHF, UHF. There are repeaters, and they are, uh, people put a repeater, it's a, another radio that listens on one frequency and transmits on another. If you go through a repeater, usually located in a high location, that will increase your mileage out to maybe 50 miles. So in a normal emergency and the repeater's still going, not a problem. You'll be able to communicate out to 50 miles with friends if they've got the same frequency in for that repeater. Now, stuff hits the fan, the grid goes down, electricity is not there. Um, do the repeaters have a backup generator? Uh, most don't. Some are tied in with cell phone uh, towers and they've got the the ability to tie into some power there or a generator. Um, it could last for a few days or so. Most repeaters, most amateur radio repeaters are owned by a club or an individual and are they going to be up there filling up their generator to keep the repeater going? Maybe for a while but probably not. Are a bunch on solar? Maybe some are. Uh, most of them probably are not. So if the power, if the grid goes down and the repeater's down, now you're into, you can talk from this radio to that radio, simplex. You've got five watts, you've got a small antenna, like I said, maybe up to five miles. Can you take this off? Yep. And you could hook it into a larger antenna, no problem. Uh, you could go a little bit, you know, more reliably out to that five miles or so. Um, these are not going to get you any regional news. They're not going to get you very far. Five miles doesn't get you very far. Or talk to your relative or neighbor who is 10 miles away, 20 miles away, 50 miles away. All of a sudden you're cut off. The cell phone tower's down due to the grid being down or power down. Your radio doesn't work through the repeater. You got to think through how do you communicate further out. Um, these small radios are nice, again, 5 watts. I've got another radio. This is more for putting in your car. Um, it's another Yesu radio, the FTM 6000. 50 watts, same frequencies as this, 144 megahertz and 440 megahertz, uh, those amateur radio bands. This has got 50 watts, so more power uh, to get a better signal out you can hook it up like this um, to a better antenna, a bigger antenna, maybe something up uh, up high in the air or on your car, and you could be mobile with it using a, a, a mobile power source. So more power gives me a better uh, distance. Maybe it's up to 10 to 20 miles uh, with something like that uh, with a good antenna. Now I've got, I go mobile uh, with a radio uh, frequently. I've got another radio, another Yesu. This is the FT991. Now this has uh, HF on it, and the HF frequencies start right about the uh, AM band. Uh, the first ham radio band is 1.8 megahertz, going up all the way to 30 megahertz. There's uh, different frequency allotments. This has HF in it, um, but it also has three of the VHF bands, uh, 50 megahertz plus 144 and four, 440 megahertz. A couple of outlets in the back for uh, plugging in antennas. This is 100 watts on all frequencies, including HF. This is a very nice small package, lots of features radio, uh, but it gets me HF. Now, what does HF get me that the VHF doesn't get me? HF gets me frequencies where I can talk around my town, my state, my region, around the country, or around the world. Um, I can hook that up to external antennas that are up high, um, and they don't have to be elaborate antennas, and I can talk around the world. I have, when I go mobile, a simple three magnetic, these are readily available from uh, MFJ, a three magnet mount that fits on the top of my car and the top has a little screw uh, spot here but this, this just the magnets are very strong and fit on the roof of my car I've got a little fly fishing 
uh, tube that I use and I carry around different antennas. All I need to do, let's see if I can do this on camera, um, there are two parts to the antenna. Let me just uh, pull one out here. Sorry for the, sorry for all the noise. The bottom part here screws into the top of that, I showed you the top of that uh, mag mount, and then there's a whip that fits in. I can't really show this all on camera. Sorry about that. Um, let's see if I can do this without knocking things over. But the total length is about six feet, depending on the frequency. And you can see, and it just fits vertically on the, the roof of my car. And with this, with this simple antenna, uh, just mag mount on there, and uh, a frequency near 14 megahertz, I've talked all around the world. I can talk all around the country. Um, it's easy. Lower frequencies, like around 3.5 megahertz or 7 megahertz, during the day I can talk, uh, you know, out to 500 miles. Uh, very simple antennas with a nice radio, and these radios aren't expensive. Maybe I should have given the prices on these uh, radios. Um, I think these are around $100. The handhelds are around $100. This mobile unit, probably close to $200, brand new. These are brand new, and there's probably a used market out there as well. This uh, FT991, um, I think brand new is right around $1,000. Um, I'm sure there's some used out on the market. Great radios for different, different uses um, with the 991 and mobile antenna. I can talk worldwide, I can talk around the country, I can talk regionally. So if I had friends who were hams and I wanted to, you know, stuff hits the fan and I wanted to uh, communicate with them, no problem. I'd be able to uh, pick the right frequency, agree on a frequency, and meet them there. Um, that's one thing that I think you should do no matter what. People sometimes say, they'll, they'll buy two radios, okay, I got my uh, communication all set, I'm ready to go. Well, if you've got a friend 10 miles away, have you tested it? Have you found where to go to test to make sure you could reliably communicate? You know, you might need to go up on the top of a hill, uh, up on the roof of your house, uh, who knows, get a different antenna that's higher. Um, have you tested it out and do you have a frequency and a time you're going to meet? You know, if stuff happens, we're going to meet every two hours at the top of the hour on this frequency uh, at this time. Work that out, test it. You're uh, someone who's uh, into preparing, test your communications. Make sure that it works. Make sure your antennas work. Make sure you know the mag mount works on your car, that you can hook it up quickly to the car uh, battery and make it work. Um, there are a multitude of antennas. I'm going to take you outside and show you some of my antennas uh, that I have that are permanent antennas. Um, but I wanted to just show you the radios um, and the different frequencies. I'm not going to get into all sorts of communication and how to um, how to talk out 500 miles versus a thousand. Maybe that's a separate video. I just saw that people were asking and people thought that this was going to be exclusively how they were going to communicate all around the region or around the country. And I think people aren't quite thinking about that. Same with GMRS radios of the same, about the same frequency. You're going to get five miles, uh, you know, unless you're up on the top of a mountain. If you look into getting your ham license um, and look at the different frequencies, how far they can communicate, the different antennas, you could have a great communication uh, package ready for you. All this stuff is portable. Oh, I should point out. I'm sorry, I'm getting my ADHD is bouncing all over. My main base station is an FT1000, 100 watts, um, 100 watts that I run into larger antennas, and I can talk reliably around the country and around the world at a moment's notice. Uh, now, if the power goes down, I can hook a generator, have this radio, 100 watts, and uh, reliably communicate around the world. Um, just about any time of the day. Um, get your ham license, look at the different options and who you want to talk to should stuff hit the fan. Who do you want to talk to? How far out are they? What frequencies could you use? 
and come up with a plan and test it. Um, the, the testing is the big thing. I'm, I'm on the radio enough. I know what time of day and what antenna and if I wanted to talk you know, from here in Minnesota to Wisconsin, I know the frequency I'd need. If I want to talk to New York, I know the frequency. If I need to get into England, I know the frequency. Um, I just, I know that after decades of, of experience. I don't mean this to be a long, long video, but um, let me take you outside, show you the, show you the uh, antennas that I've got, and then I'll come back in um, and kind of summarize everything. I'll be right back. All right, I'm outside. I'm going to try to show you some antennas and uh, do it the right way, I hope. Um, I've got something really simple. You don't need to have uh, big, big antennas. That helps, but it, you don't need that. I, something as simple as a dipole antenna. Now, a dipole antenna, uh, out the back of your radio, there's a feed line, a piece of coax cable that comes out the back of the radio and hooks to your antenna. If you put a dipole, which is nothing more than a center insulator, I'm going to show you. Um, you see the, it's very similar to the back of the radio. You take a cable, it comes out the back of the radio, and it hooks into this. This is a center insulator. It's got a wire going that direction and a wire going this direction. Um, and it's just, I don't know if I can show this the right way. I'm going to lay it on the ground. Um, sorry, it's all looped together, but it's just a wire that goes out to an insulator. Real simple design. And all I'd need to do is you want to get that antenna in the air. I could throw a rope up to the top of that pine tree and pull that center insulator up to that, take one end and point it one direction and the other end of that other wire and take it the other direction. Now the antenna is up in the air, you can transmit uh, and depending on the height, talk to different, uh, talk to people all around the region, the country, the world, depending on the frequency. That antenna is for what we call 20 meters, about 14 megahertz. And it's about, I don't know, 30, 40 feet long. Uh, it, maybe it's not that. Even, I don't know, 25, 30 feet long. Um, they're not big antennas for certain frequencies. The lower you go in frequency, the longer it's going to be. I don't need to get into that. But antennas can be as simple as a wire. A couple of wires, simple. Now, I've got, for HF frequencies in my yard, I've got a small tower. And I've got a beam antenna. This is a tri-band beam from Cushcraft. This covers the 20, 15, and 10 meter bands, which are 14 megahertz, 21 megahertz, and 28 megahertz. I've got a rotator up on the tower. I can talk with this reliably around the country and around the world. Let's see if I can get that in there. I can talk around the world during most of the day. Um, I've got it guide with some rope. It's a very kind of temporary situation, but it works. It's only at 30 feet. It works. Um, do I need that to talk around the world? Nope. It sure helps. If I want to talk to Australia, I can turn that antenna and point it at Australia. If I want to talk to someone in Belgium, point it up towards Europe, and I can talk to uh, some friends in Belgium. If I want to talk to Florida, point it towards Florida. It's pretty simple. Uh, with the rotator. Um, and that antenna, that antenna works. Um, that dipole, while it won't give me as much signal strength in one direction, um, that dipole will work as well. So simplicity uh, for an antenna. That uh, up on the tower, it's really nice. I've got a great location here, it helps. I've got another antenna here, and this is for a lower frequency. I'm just walking out to it, um, and this is a vertical antenna. Very simple. I've got the base in the ground, and I've got radials, which go along the ground. They're underneath the grass. Um, again, my feed line comes out the back of the radio and hooks right in here. You see there's one piece that goes up, one that goes down to the, goes down to the, uh, uh, the radials. The other piece of the antenna, other than the radials, is the vertical. And the vertical goes up 37 feet. 
very simple design. It works on a lower frequency, seven megahertz, but it works very reliably. Now this is one during the day. I can talk out, oh, five, six, seven hundred miles at night. Um, this frequency opens up and I can uh, talk around the world. So uh, each frequency is, is a little different, but simple antenna, you know, this one, I, it breaks into uh, like uh, six to eight foot sections. I could put it uh, in, a, in a tent bag or something. I could deploy this in a, in a moment's notice. I could have that wire up in the trees um, within about five minutes. This one would take maybe a half an hour to get set up. Uh, and I would have some reliable communications on several frequencies. Um, antennas do not need to be elaborate. They can be, they don't need to be. Um, for emergency communication, I would say keep it simple. I don't think I'm gonna go back in the radio room, but I just wanna, you know, I wanna do this video. Hopefully it's not too rambling. If you're a, a, a prepper, if you're one who wants to be prepared for every situation and if stuff hits the fan, you wanna be ready to communicate to friends, to family, to other, other people around the region, around the city, around the country, around the world, ham radio is the way to go. It is the best option. It beats GMRS, it beats CB, it beats, if everything fails, ham radio is the way to go. I, I can't stress that enough, but you gotta have the right gear. Uh, I hope I explained this right. Hopefully I did. There's, there's so much to cover with ham radio. It's very simple, yet it's very complex. Um, if you've got questions, if you've got questions, it's, we need more hams. It'd be great to have more hams. We provide a lot of communication in emergencies. We do a lot of good work, and it's a fun hobby. So consider becoming a ham radio operator. Um, if you're a prepper or someone looking to uh, be prepared in case of any situation or stuff hitting the fan, ham radio is a tool that'll be in your belt that will be invaluable. I can't stress that enough. If you want to get your ticket, you want to get your license, if you've got questions about ham radio, if I went off on too many tangents here and you want me to make some other videos to explain other things about ham radio, let me know. I'd love to do that. It is my favorite hobby. It's a great hobby. I've met some incredible people through the hobby uh, here locally and around the world. I've got friends all around the world due to this hobby. Um, but if, if you'd like me to make some other videos to explain other facets of the hobby, I'd love to do that. I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, hopefully I didn't get off too bad, but uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you uh, have questions, put them down below and uh, maybe we'll turn it into some other videos. Thanks for watching everybody, take care.